Hello, hello, and welcome to an overview of um, yet another Ghostbusters Arduino Proton Pack um, build. <laughs> so there's there's a bunch of these floating around, um, and I took a took a, a, my own spin on it, uh, and I think the the thing I've been missing most um, from these uh, existing projects have just been the sort of traceability of understanding the state. Um, and so you can you can link to some of these other uh, great projects, but if you do sort of drop into them, you'll notice that the the um, the loop in the Arduino uh, code is involved. Uh, it's it's deep, uh, and so one of the ways we can solve for that um, through um, a state machine. So if you're not familiar with the state machine, don't worry. It's um, it basically just says. Um, we have one state at any given time, at least the machine has one state at any given time, and there are uh, certain transitions that are defined to get from one state to another. So for a proton pack, that's basically what it is. A proton pack is one big state machine, right? It's off and then it boots, and then it's um, what I'm calling locked, and then it's activated, and then you're firing, and then maybe you're overloading, and then maybe you're venting, and then you you're, you sort of go through your cycles and powering down. So that's what I did here. Um, again, I, I heavy inspiration and even some code from these other two projects. Um, you can find all, all my code is on, on GitHub. I'll definitely have a link uh, with this video, but let's, let's take a look at the, um, at the code. So this is, um, my project split into two different, uh, Arduino. So we have one in the wand and one in the pack. So the state machine is exactly the same between the two. The only difference is what the triggers for, uh, going between the states. So transitions are all the same. The states are all the same, but what actually like makes the transitions move, uh, changes between the wand and the pack. So right now the wand is the one that runs the show because it's the one that has all the switches. <laughs> so that, that's a pretty, uh, simple, simple choice for me. Um, so you can see here at, at, at the beginning of the, um, code, we uh, initialize the state machine uh, and we define some states. So again, I, I alluded to these earlier. We basically start, we have off and then we boot and then the machine is locked and then it's activated. So again, if you're locked, you won't be able to fire. We'll look at the transitions in a bit. And then you're firing, overloading, venting and powering down. So uh, a handful of states. Let's see here. I have eight lines selected. So eight states. Um, and we'll skip over some of this because this is all initialization. You can look at this later. It's, it's interesting. Um, since I do have two Arduinos, I'm also communicating via serial, and so I have some sort of messaging that, again, this, these are shared uh, between the two, but we can we can skip this again. But then you notice, uh, once I drop down to setup, uh, this is where we actually define our transitions. So you can see here, from the off state, I can transition into booting. Um, and you'll notice here we have an ampersand and then boot. So this is a, the boot function is what will uh, be run to determine if we can actually transition to the booting state. Uh, same thing from here. We have um, the booting state. We can actually either go to uh, cycle locked or cycle activated. Uh, from locked, we can go to activated. Activated, we can either go to firing or back to locked, um, depending on all of these things. So I'm not going to go through every single permutation, but you can see here, like we're defining from a given state, what states can we go to? And these um, functions are how we evaluate if we're going to actually transition to those states. Um, all right, so we'll skip over some of this because this is just ba da ba da ba. So you notice, like, again, I said on some of those other projects, one of the things that really drives me crazy is the, the, the actual run loop is ginormous. You see here, uh, my run loop, and this, this one is 11 lines. Um, and most of the heavy lifting is in machine.run. Uh, this is what actually ex executes the, the state machine. So when my pack boots, it is in off but then immediately it's going to determine it's going to go through and say okay i'm in the off state i can only go one place and that's booting so it's going to first thing it's going to run is it's going to say let me evaluate the boot function so if i do if i look at my function boot it's a function boot void boot no it's a boolean there it is i don't program in c i'm a ruby guy okay um here we go so the boot function, these are my transitions. And what this is going to do is if this returns true, it will allow the state machine to transition to whatever its target uh, state is, in this case, boot. Uh, so you can see here, it's, like, it's saying if the startup switch is on and if we're not already booted, then we can go to boot. Super, super easy to understand what would cause the state machine to transition from off to boot. 
uh, and then is startup switch is just a little. Um, you know, let's see, where are you? Yeah, it's just a, a wrapper function around digital read, right? So startup switch is just um, again, it's just a, a switch that we have there, and these are all initialized, but it's just a little nicer to read uh, other than that. So. Um, yeah, state machines. They're 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 pretty cool. Uh, and then so the, the the other thing I really love is so so we have uh, you'll notice uh, void loop. Okay, so machine run. So the first thing it does, and, and I can look at um, the documentation because we're using uh, this this library, uh, Jrulian state machine. Um, so I think the first thing it does is it evaluates um, should we transition, and then if we do, it does it, and then um, it actually executes the current state. So let's go take a look at my code again. Um, so let's assume that we just transitioned into uh, booting. So I have, if you notice here, when we set up um, booting, it also takes a pointer to a function called booting. So that means that when we're in the booting state and we call machine run and we don't transition off, we're just going to run the booting uh, function. And that will be right here, booting. So now when we're in booting, this function is the one when we call machine run that's going to get run. Uh, and then the thing that I love about this library is also the first time we enter this function, there's um, machine execute once will return true. So I know that as soon as I get into booting, if this is the first time I've been here, um, this will be true and I can do some sort of initial setup. And then every other iteration through the booting um, function, if we're, we've been in the boot state, this will always be false. So I know that this will only get run once once we enter the state. Um, and, and so as I'm looking at this code, it's pretty easy to tell this is all that's happening in my boot sequence. Um, so the initial, uh, setup, I'm basically saying, Hey, main pack, serial, write message boot. I'm like, Hey, main pack, we're booting. So it's going to let that pack know, and then it will do its transition. Uh, we're doing some timers set up here. We're basically telling our lights to go through the boot sequence. And this is again, letting it know if we should initialize that sequence or not. Bar graph, same thing. Hey, start your booting sequence, whether or not it should initialize or not. And then here, if the timer is over, then we're going to say is booted. And if you go to look, uh, if you look here, cycle locked um, will basically say is booted is true and our safety switch is not on. So that means that we're in the locked. Uh, otherwise, we would go to the activated if the safety switch is on and we're not firing. Um, yeah, and then that's and you can basically again trace all the logic through here. Uh, the other thing I really like, I mentioned earlier, it's really easy to tell when the pack is in a given state what's happening. Um, so if we go to firing, we can see here we're doing a bunch of extra stuff. Are we overloading or not? Overloaded. Uh, you can go into the venting sequence. Um, smoke maybe. Yeah, some some fun stuff in this code. Um, powering down what's happening. Um, yeah, so it's pretty easy to read. Uh, because of the state machines, the the other the other thing that I did, that I think, uh, and if you can go all the way to the bottom here, you can see like it's only 437 lines of code, and honestly, I could even make it shorter if I pulled this. Um, where is it? What's it called? Uh, the fire strobe. And again, this was this was borrowed from the Count. What's this guy's name? Count de Monet. 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 Uh, this is copied from his his code as well. Um, so if I pulled that out, we would, we would probably be closer to 367, uh, no, 354 lines of code. Um, yes. So where was I going with that? So you'll notice at the top here, um, we have three other includes that are non-standard, right? So th these are actual like published libraries that we're pulling in, but we have uh, a few others. We have volume control, bar lights and lights. Um, so let's look at bar graph. So bar graph dot CPP. So this is where we actually put all of our bar graph logic. So the nice thing here is that since it's confined to its own file, it keeps our run file a little bit more contained, and it also uh, allows us to um, just sort of yeah keep all of our state in in its own uh, class, which is kind of nice. So this is all isolated from the main pack. Um, again, I think if we look for bar graph, yeah, you see here we we initialize. Oops. Bar graph, there it is. Uh, we initialize it here, and then we we use bar graph in a few places. 
which I don't think we actually use the bar graph sequences. That's a, that's a garbage, but bar graph setup, we'll call in here, bar graph setup, and that's where it initializes the matrix, does a delay, it sets its brightness to 10. Bar graph one, will this, this is, this is another nice thing too that I like about this setup is, um, if the volume is changing, the bar graph will like temporarily um, display the volume. But for, let's see, what's the timeout? Fire volume display, let's see. Yep, so it's like for, for uh, two seconds, it'll display the volume. So if you're changing the volume, the bar graph will interrupt um, whatever it's displaying, um, show you the actual volume level. And then after a two second timeout, it'll resume its animations. So another sort of nice little little piece here. So um, yeah, I think that's enough enough rambling about the uh, the pack. Uh, if you want to see it in action, if you go to the uh, README, you can click click this uh, link here and it'll show you the pack going through its animation. The README is super sparse right now. Hopefully I'll do a, a breakdown. But like I said, I think the the interesting part about this is not so much the build. I think the build is pretty pretty standard, you know, again, copying off of these uh, previous projects about the, the hardware that I used and some of the, some of the animations and software, but the real, the real um, value add here is um, extracting um, some of the functionality into their own dedicated uh, classes and also using state machines for these two, um, these two projects to manage the state. So anyways, I think that's enough for now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.